Christmas. Bible. Well, I mean, in my trade, it's a surprise. I mean, you obviously get a phone call to say, I've got a sofa, I've got a chair, or whatever, from a puffy to a stool. You never know what you're going to meet. You never, ever do. Like, someone's idea of a sofa could be a 100-year-old settee. Or, there again, it could be just a brand new one with with leg broken or whatever. But the fundamental part is, is every every person that you meet is like a doctor sees a patient. You've got to see what they want done. What colour? Do you want new forms or do you want a replacement or do you want it polished? Or so you're trying to get all this text done. You never ever get them 100 percent generally, but you try your best and touch wood. I've always been paid, so they must be happy. As I say. Humans are like furniture. Everyone's different that you meet. I mean, I might do an antique chair, or you might do a chaise lawn, or you might do a basic bed settee, or something like that. At my age now, you you I can do it like an overdrive, like you've explained to me, brother. We have to look at something and think, oh, I'll have that done in a day. Or I can look at something and say, I'll have that done an hour. But normally, sometimes, when I was a boy, it would take us a week. But depending on what you come across, you never really know 100% because the, the, the thing is covered with material. It's what's inside. So when you open this Pandora's box, you might love a load of fleas. Or you might, you might just, you know, cats being peanut or whatever. But the, the top of the list is you've priced it and then the person's picked the colour, which is sometimes the hardest part. It's the challenge of being able to say to yourself, well, oh, I can't do that. I'm going to take it back. <laughs> and me and my brother used to laugh, you know, as if everyone had a lot of money. I'd love to get a horrible three B suite, right? Like half do it and just take it back half done and say... I'm awfully sorry, man. I can't do it. I always used to laugh at that one. I've actually come across that where so-called upholsterers have came to something, priced it, obviously done it a lot cheaper than me, and then found out they couldn't do it. And then the customer has been that embarrassed. The phone is saying, that man's run away, you know, and I give him a deposit and he come back and he's brought me chain. It doesn't even mean done. This is amazing like, when I think of it, 81 year trading, 81 years. I mean, I'm 64 now, so 64 years. I was bought, well, a pram in the, in the shop with my mum, little mum with a coal fire. And I remember vividly like five or six year old playing in the back of the shop, bomb buildings and things. And my dad doing the tax then. It was the smell that, that got me as a little boy, you know, the polisher, the French polish, because it smells, it's got a certain smell about it, like methylated, it's in, in the shellac, and then the smell of the hide, the smell of vinyl, the vinyl's got a smell. So all this aromas, but also antiques have got a smell. The age, the, the, the musk, the musk smell, the musky smell of old, fur, dusty furniture. Now, you, you couldn't make it up. You couldn't you could buy it. It's not bottled. It's there. It's there. I can still, when I go in my factory and I have an old piece of furniture, the, the smell of that age, of whatever I've opened, is the smell of when I was a little boy. So it takes us back to all them memories of polishers and cabinet makers and sawdust and, and the different woods you used to use. Like there was an old master 
uh, cabinet maker, Gilly Whitley, and he used to uh, use hardwoods, and some of them he used to use for snuff, like like a mavite. It's one of the hard he used to, for steel. It's equivalent to steel on, on boats. They've used it for washes, but this old man would grind it and get the powder, pour it in his tin, and, and I'd say, "What the hell is he doing, Dad?" Oh, don't take any notice, Dad. He's his son. He's he's a bit he's eccentric. Except he's he's sniffing sawdust. But the, the when you come to smell it, it was powdery, peppery. The wood was peppery, so he wasn't so daft after all, you know. And he get you didn't realize he get older. Top of the list is to, to keep going, not to stop. I used to laugh at my dad years ago and my brother, and he says, look, just keep going. No matter what happens, keep going. Look for work. Work won't come to you, look for it. He says, and take care of this business. Forget about, he says, I'm not being horrible. No matter whatever happens in your life, your marriages, everything can go. He says, but this business, if you look after it, It'll make sh- it'll it'll repair every mistake you've ever made in your life. He says, but always remember this: when you get older, all the mistakes that you've made, when you're younger, you can repair them by work. When you're older, you come in firm, so you won't be able to do what you did. So there'll come a day when you'll have to rely on someone or something to take it over because of your ill and aged old health. But in the meantime, no matter what happens, take care of business. There he is. See, it's back already. Mr. Thompson. It's a lovely day.